Oh, welcome back. Um, today we're going to turn this bit of alley bronze into a replacement gear for this uh, linear actuator that I wrecked a couple of weeks ago. So um, uh, we're more or less set up, so uh, let me just uh, explain. First up, here's the plastic gear that we've got to replace, and as you can probably see, it's grooved on one side where the um, uh, the motor has wrecked it. The pinion, I should say, has wrecked it. So uh, um, I've been to my local scrap metal pusher and um, picked up some aluminium bronze. It's as close as I could get to brass that they had in stock. This stuff is absolutely gorgeous. Apparently it's used in the, in the uh, jewellery industry. I'm not surprised. It, it looks like fake gold. I mean, it's, it's lovely. Anyway, um, I have modelled it up uh, in CAD and cut the, cut the blank uh, that way round um, because um, basically this diameter here is the same as this diameter here and, uh, and that's the thickest bit to give me the maximum rigidity while I hold it in the chuck. So uh, I'll show you the setup. Teeth on, the, uh, on this uh, gear have to be cut with a 10 degree angle. So um, hence why I made the sign plate in the previous video. So um, the blank is going to be held in the chuck there. And if I can show you, I don't know if you can see this, I'll give you a close up. Turn this um, little proxy angle meter on. You can see I've set it to zero degree on the table. So if I move that over to my new sign plate and just pan you over a bit. There we go. Um, it's it's definitely vary, varying slightly, but uh, 9.9 9 degrees, uh, one tenth of a degree. What's that? Uh, some number of seconds out. Not much. Um, in fact, when I was testing this earlier, it was 10.1. So this um, meter is a little bit variable. Anyway, uh, I'll just walk you through the setup. This is the setup. I've got, uh, I started with a bar clamped across the table, which should be, and I can show you, which is going to be tricky. That, um, I used a, a bigger set square to get this right, and uh, that is square to the table. Um, then I put the sign plate on and butted it up against this. So the sign plate is square to this, which is square to the table. So the sign plate is square. And um, then I elevated this end by, uh, I used a little machine shop sign bar calculator. That is 40 millimeters, uh, that stack of uh, parallels. It should be 40.1 to give me exactly the right angle, but to be perfectly honest, I thought one tenth of a, of a, uh, of a millimeter, the angle difference there is gonna be tiny so we'll uh, we'll risk it it's close enough i think uh, here is the fourth axis um, which is under control of the cnc so um, it should in theory once i've got it set up cut a tooth withdraw the cutter rotate one fortieth of a turn come back cut the next tooth retract rotate one fortieth and it should go all the way through that Set is going to take it around 40 minutes or so because I'm taking extremely light cuts. This, is, um, uh, this isn't the most rigid of setups, but uh, given it a, this is my, my test to see if the thing is going to come loose. And that's to give it a good shake. Uh, can't move it, so I'm hoping for the best. The first thing to do is, um, I, out of broken tools, I, I grind up these points. That's an old center drill, as you might be able to see. Um, grind a point on one end, with a uh, hold this in a drill then hold it on a um, on a grinding wheel and you get a, a reasonably concentric point so the thing to do the first thing to do is to get this all lined up so if i put in that point there and then bring excuse me somebody knocking gotta go lunch is due so uh, uh my lovely wife has made lunch for me, so uh, you'll have to excuse me for a few minutes while I go and um, fill my belly. 
Right, that's better. Suitably refreshed. Let me see if I can get these parts lined up. What what um, we what I'm hoping to do is get the um, this the axis of this chuck should be absolutely in line with the table. So um, I can, in theory, just use a point in here and a point in the quill. Uh, to line up that axis, the x-axis. So um, let me see if we can do that. I reckon that's pretty close. Let me um, just get in there with my mirror. There we go. So that is the y-axis sorted out. Can you hear that? It'll stop in a second. There you go, just stopped. That's the um, auto lubricator. Behind this panel at the back here, there's um, um, <coughs> uh, an oil pump that uh, every half an hour or so it, it pumps for 10 or 15 seconds. Yeah, it comes through a manifold on the side here and uh, goes to all of the ways on this uh, machine. And uh, you probably can't see it very well, but there's oil squishing out all the way along the, um, uh, that dovetail. Now here's the tricky bit, I need to find, in fact I might need to take that out again, I need to find the, put this point exactly on the centre line at that point, which is going to be tricky. So uh, let me have a think about how I'm going to do that, because I'm not really not sure. Right, I haven't had a half an hour thinking about it, I think this might be the solution. So I've put the, um, uh, put a uh, a centre point back in the chuck and I've got this um, uh, scribing block set to exactly the centre height of the um, uh, of this chuck so anywhere this moves on this sign plate should be exactly on the centre line of that chuck so if I just take that off and put the blank gear back in. Ooh. I must get myself one of those really fat markers. Okay, that's the centre line marked. Now the really tricky bit. Um, let's move back in Y, Oops. along in Z, and down, sorry, along in X and down in Z. I have changed to a one millimeter, a brand new in fact, one millimeter drill. So let's get that exactly on centre height. Do you know what? I think that's probably close enough. I've changed to the cutter that I'm going to use. So the only thing left to do is get the cutting point exactly on that um, that uh, centre line in the middle of that part. So let me do that. I brought you in handheld as close as I can get. Um, so hopefully you can see the tool is right on that traditional mark that we made earlier. I can thoroughly recommend this. This is G Wizard and um, uh, once you've bought it it's free for hobby use up to I think about a thousand watt motor in your spindle so um, yeah it's okay so we kind of what we're doing here uh, I've got the profile for my machine 
um, the tool diameter at 34.5 mil, one cutting point, one flute, uh, an inch stick out, yeah, 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 whatever. Um, cutting brass, did I say that? Cutting brass, uh, and it's the the actual cutter is carbide, uh, which gives me, uh, I like this, the, um, the slider where you can move exactly how much, whether you want a finishing strategy or roughing strategy. Um, I generally put that at 50% for my mill. Seems to be about right as the maximum that my mill can cope with. Um, and it gives me 2000 RPMs and a feed rate of 329 millimeters per minute. So feeding that into dear old fusion. Here's my circular pattern. Hopefully you can see that. That's my so if I just um, simulate that. Now I don't know if you can see that, but we're not actually making contact with the with the blank material here. And that's because just to prove to myself that this isn't going to crash and ruin all my work, which it's highly likely to do, I've increased the diameter of the tool by 10 millimeters. So uh, the tool says it's 44.48 mil. So in theory, we should have at least a five millimeter gap between the blank material and the cutter. So um, that tells me if the program's going to work, hopefully. Um, stats wise, it says 47 minutes. So um, let me close that. That's the full path that it'll take. Uh, I have set up. Uh, you need to go, if you want to do this sort of thing, you need to go and watch the video. I think John Saunders at NYC CNC did a, uh, did a, a short video early on um, in Fusion's form tool um, design system. It's improved, I believe. Uh, anyway, um, this, is the, this thing here you can see is the form tool. That's the shape of the actual cutter, um, which is drawn up, and then you load that into your library of tools. So I have entered all of the data for that. Um, the cutter, I've, like I said, I've increased the diameter slightly. Uh, the cutting data, that came from G-Wizard. I really can't recommend G-Wizard enough. Um, anyway, so that's, th that's that. Um, all that's left to do is to load this, post-process it. Uh, I'll cut a gear test. And that's going to my desktop. Um, and the post-presser is the Mark III mil. Um, yeah, that's all of it. So nothing else I need to worry about. So post it. So if I close all these down, gear te test tap failed. I wonder why happened that happened. Okay, figured it out. It is when you post process, it's down here, fourth axis mounted along x axis. I hadn't specified that, so um, that is what caused the error. I'm just about to press cycle start uh, and then I'm going to turn the flood off immediately. I think uh, there's a flood selected, hopefully. Um, and then we will see whether or not this is going to crash. So my finger will be very much over the stop button just in case. So uh, wish me luck. Well, if it fails, you'll see it anyway. But if it works, all the better. Uh, this is just a test cut, so it shouldn't actually cut anything. Let's give it a go. Right, tool zero, tool zero, that's the one that we've got, so let's press start.
stop it. I figured some of it out. The, uh, it's made a reasonable job of cutting the tooth, which I'm quite chuffed about. Um, however, it's not cut it exactly on centre line, looking at it. Oh, hang on. No, take that back. That looks pretty, pretty all right. Um, but it's cut it on the wrong side, so the tooth should be facing this way, and it's facing that way because the, it's cutting on the back side, not on the front side. My mistake. Uh, I need to figure that out. What what I'm going to do is uh, I've cut this spurious tooth in this thing, so um, I'm going to let it run, and at the very least, at the end of this process, we'll see whether or not this uh, is going to work. I may have to make another blank. That only took a couple of hours. Ugh. Anyway, I'll uh, um, I'll redo the code for this with the right diameter of cutter, and uh, and then we'll start it and then see if it works properly. Okay, I've uh, I've been fiddling and fiddling and fiddling and I reckon this should make the first cut. So let's, uh, let's, G0, uh, sorry, G0. Cycle start, tool zero, tool zero, tool zero, correct, go. I've, um, <clears throat> I've stopped it because something really weird went happened. There's the uh, you can see the tooth there that was cut at the wrong angle on the back side. Well, uh, fixed all that. That was a piece of cake. Um, hadn't selected the axis correctly, uh, and I started it, started it off, and it cut all the way round. Let me uh, let me just go to a oh, wrong way. cut all these teeth up to 180 degrees and then started going backwards, got to 180 degrees and started going backwards and cutting the same teeth again in the reverse direction. So instead of going around full 360 it went to 180 and then reversed. I don't understand that. But you'll all be pleased to know, hopefully, uh, God this is, this is just like pulling hen's teeth. Um, Fusion, never had a problem with it in the past, uh, cutting uh, helical features like this. It's, it's always worked in the three or four times I've used it. Um, however, there seems to have been something changed in the post-processor because it gets to uh, 180 degrees and then goes the other way. So it goes up to 180 uh, and then it starts counting backwards. So uh, I don't know I don't know enough about fusion as to whether or not that's something that can be fixed in fusion. Uh, sorry, uh, I don't know enough about Mac 3. I don't know whether that can be fixed in fusion or Mac 3. But what I've done is, hopefully this will work. If not, we'll both see it together. Um, I have taken out the first 
180 20 teeth effectively and um, redone the, the the code for the next 20 teeth that have uh, the right index angle so it goes all the way positively until it hits 360 degrees so this could go horribly horribly wrong because I'm just going to press start and hope for the best uh, da, da, da. tool change yeah correct let's go right that should wiggle its way around to 180 degrees and then start cutting again well that's positive it stopped at 180 doesn't look too far out There's absolutely no play there whatsoever, that's good. That way around, isn't it? I have to say, that's looking good. Uh, I've, it's not finished, uh, it's not completely cut to the right shape, it's got to be a hole through it yet, and uh, this end is, needs reshaping, but uh, let me uh, just put some power on and we'll see whether or not it's going to work. I would have said that was quite likely. Must put the screws in. Uh, I don't know if you can see in there very well, but um, there's the motor and there's the front gear. Here's the. Um, God, this thing is still full of bits of chewed up plastic. Uh, so let's insert that in. There we go. Now I shall uh, just turn it over because it's easier. And uh, we'll put some power on. found it, uh, if I can point this out, that tooth is narrow and that tooth is big so I think um, there's an indexing point that went wrong well that's interesting in itself so uh, yeah Apart from that, the rest of it runs an absolute treat. After a little bit of uh, rework with the uh, Dremel, if I put that in there and hold it in the, try and hold it in the centre position, let's uh, see what we get. That's pretty, pretty good. Is it good enough for the high load thing that we've got here? Probably. Yeah, quite chuffed with that. Um, do you know, I'm going to stop this video here because, uh, well, I've been away for a few days and uh, uh, I've only had a day on in the shop um, to actually make this gear. Uh, it's clearly mm, sort of all right in a sort of, mm, yeah, way. Yeah. Uh, so, do you know, I think it shows promise. So, I mean... It's got to be better than this plastic thing. I mean, this plastic thing is crap. So uh, at least mine is crap, but it's made of metal. I think I might finish this and um, and install it and see how I how I go because um, uh, I have got some spare. Oh, in fact, I've got several bits of spare material to make another one from. Should I feel the need? Um, but yeah, yeah. You can, you, I can, I can clearly see. In fact, there's two teeth on this that are. Oh no, no, that's all right. Yeah, just looking at this, the, te the they're all right. These teeth, they're not brilliant, but they're all right. Um, I suspect what happened was when I had to, um, uh, because it was indexing halfway round and going backwards again. 
I think I've probably put in one indexing uh, position that's one degree out and one degree is more than enough to make that not work properly. Sorry this is a, this is a crap video, um, I'm not much of an engineer to be perfectly honest but uh, yeah I'm, I'm reasonably pleased with that, That'll, uh, we'll give it a bash anyway. Do hit the subscribe and the um, uh, notification bell and uh, we'll see you next time when hopefully I'll get this blasted thing back together again and we can get on with something a bit more interesting. Anyway, good to see you, take care, look after yourselves, bye bye.